Hey guys, Chris Linton here from Tribe Fit, and today we have a very, very special guest, Josh Tree, with us today. How are you, Josh? Yeah, I'm good. Chris. How are you doing? Really good, mate. I'm doing really well. And guys, we've got um, Josh for today's interview. Josh has about a million degrees. He's got a super high IQ. He's doing some phenomenal things in the men's health space. And what we're gonna to do today is specifically focus on a retreats and events. Retreats and events being an op option or an opportunity revenue stream for online fitness businesses. And uh, Josh reached out and, thought, and said, Chris, why don't we have a chat and I can let everyone know what I've been able to do and then some people can take some learning from that. So Josh, mate, without me, going on for ages and trying to tell your life story. Can you maybe give everyone a little bit of uh, background about yourself, where you've come from and how you got into the events and retreats and, and that sort of thing uh, that you're currently doing? Sure. Um, so my, my background is I've been in the health fitness industry for about going on 15, sort of 16 years and I've had a number of evolutions during that time. So initially started off as a um, as a personal trainer working out of a gym. Um, we in one of those sort of globo gyms. Um, and then uh, as we like to put it, I'm just gonna put the lights on so, it's, so you can actually see me. Um, so I started off there, actually before I even got into personal training, I was actually a membership sales consultant. So I, I was born and bred in sales and, and knew uh, had the sort of gift of the gap and uh, swayed people in membership. Um, then went into personal training. Uh, then I worked in high performance. So I actually worked as a strength conditioning coach for the West Tigers for about three seasons. Um, then sort of went into um, GWS, started all their junior high performance programs, worked a little bit at the AAU in an internship, working with the 20s and the 7s boys. And then from there decided, well, I think whilst that during that sort of period of time was uh, then doing my bachelor's degree in sport and exercise science and, and making that sort of transition in, in growth into uh, exercise physiology, which is what I do today. Um, and whilst I've been in the exercise physiology industry, I've been um, privileged enough to be able to do a number of things. Obviously, I work with some high-risk patients now that are going through you know, cancer treatment, might have heart disease, pulmonary issues. Uh, but the other side of the work that I do um, from a board level and um, a couple of other things is in health promotion. And, uh, and from that sort of side of things, I've been involved in some men's health campaigns like Real Man Move and, um, and uh, a number of other sort of um, ESSA-based um, initiatives like Exercise Right, seen in front of like Better Homes and Gardens talking about that and a couple of media, media sort of channels. And... Um, and from that health promotion, got a real passion for it and real passion around men's health and noticed there wasn't a lot being done around men's health um, compared to women's health. And um, as someone who works with blokes on a day-to-day -day basis, I often see guys coming into the clinic in worst-case scenarios. They're, they're blokes that have, yeah, they're broken. Uh, they either have mental health um, disorder coming through, like uh, I've worked with guys with schizophrenia, bipolar, PTSD, veterans. Um, work with guys with really bad, um, extreme cases of heart disease and diabetes and, and pulmonary issues. Uh, and, they, they are, and the common thread was always they've left it too late and they had that sort of she'll be right attitude, which um, then led to me um, wanting to do more about it. Um, and I suppose um, in terms of what I'm doing now in relation to events, it's really started from conversations, having conversations with blokes over a coffee to say, what can we do about it? Um, fortunately enough, I had a good, uh, had a couple of um, strong sort of con contacts, uh, so contacts around uh, media uh, and uh, that led to some conversations and getting things started in that, in that base and uh, have had a little bit of experience with event management now having thrown myself in the deep end the last two years doing that, um, definitely know exactly what I need to do and how to launch an event and all the ins and outs of uh, what to consider. And it's something, that, um, where, uh, it's something that's become a really strong part of uh, what I do now as a health professional and, uh, as, um, and also in part of my business. Beautiful, beautiful, mate. Well, um, 
I think the video has frozen a little bit, but we can still hear you loud and clear. It looks like it's uh, the video is working again now. But uh, mate, just to to break it down into two stages. So first and foremost, um, first stage. What do you currently do now in your events in regards to how many faces, uh, price points, and, and time frame? And then second to that, what have you learnt, or how many have you run, and what have you learnt and changed? from the first one to where you are now, um, just so people yeah. who are thinking about kicking off, what are kind of the, the, the traps that, that people can fall into? Um, yeah, look, in, in answering the first part of that, so the events that I run now, um, I'm sure the guys in, in the tribe group might have come across it called It's a Bloke's Lunch. Yeah. Um, really, um, it's, it's pretty much getting a, a group of blokes and even CEO, a group of blokes in a room talking about men's health and the way we do it is through storytelling rather than uh, just throwing facts and figures and information because often you know blokes know about it but um but it's really having those charismatic role models in front of them telling in their story that actually does something about it and, and it brings about change yep. getting back to your point about price point in terms of price point, those a ticket for something like that starts at $125 for a three-course lunch and they're there in front of listening to um, presenters. They're getting, uh, obviously, networking and, and, and building connections. And that's the big thing is storytelling connections from there. Now, whilst I say the price point is um, $125, we also then sell things like sponsorships as part of that event as well. And those can can go from being uh, $500 up to about $10,000 to be involved. Um, and, and the big thing with those is, is it's definitely about creating value and then also nurturing and maintaining the partnerships and relationships involved. And they're, they're probably getting, that's kind of leading into the second point about what I've learned from being involved in events is um, when you're looking at um, obviously established event, people need to have a good experience on the, especially on the first one, um, to then maintain those relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, but secondly, you also need to understand if you if you're trying to seek sponsorship from someone, it's not a transactional relationship. It's about it's actually a partnership, and it's about building value and understanding. And when you're seeking sponsorship, understanding who their audience is and who your audience is, and seeing where the alignment follows. Um, so that's the, the second part of it as well. Beautiful. So I hope that sort of addresses what you're talking about. Yeah. Awesome. But that's awesome. probably the biggest learning. From, yeah. yeah. No, awesome, mate. So, um, ticket price, how many, how many heads or how many people in your first one versus your, your most recent one, um, in regards to how many bums in seats and so on. Yep. Yeah. So in terms of the first event we put on, which was last year, um, we got 170 to it. Um, and then in terms of this year, we've maintained that same level, but we've had further corporate sponsorship and investment. And um, so in terms of revenue, our revenue has been slightly more this year. Um, but the, the plus side to this year's event being a second, being the second um, instalment is that it's evolved in created further spin-off opportunities to further spin-off events that we're looking at launching into 2019. And it's also created some opportunities for further blokes' lunches to take place in other areas around um, New South Wales and possibly into Queensland. Of course, of course. Mate, that's phenomenal. 170 people, um, pretty much on average to every single one. That's, that's pretty phenomenal. Hats off to that. That's, that's, that's good. Uh, it's a good number. And obviously, the larger the scale, the more... Uh, complexity there is in regards to setups, delivery, logistics, and so on and so forth. So I guess looking back now, if someone's listening to this, Josh, and they're going, okay, well, I have a, a niche, I have an audience, um, I, I, I service them in an online format currently, or I'm thinking about online, but I'm also thinking about potentially having some aspect of an event, a retreat, or whatever it might be. Now, looking back on where you've come and the experience you've got so far, what would be your recommendations to them on their first one, the first cab off the rank? 
Well, I think with the first one, you've always got to factor in what's your budget. You need to understand if you're going to put on something like the bloke's lunch, for example, uh, like a sit down event or if it's a fitness um, event or retreat or anything like that, you actually need to sit down and work out the numbers first before you even put it on. Um, you need to obviously work out what your price point needs to be so you know what your break even is um, before you even put it on. Otherwise, if you, if you just go ahead with it, uh, you're going to run into a whole lot of complexity and drama um, before you even start. Um, for us, the big thing that we did with the Blake's Lunch before we even put it on is we costed it out. Yep. So we knew exactly we knew exactly what sort of support we needed. We need uh, and and certainly sponsorship helps a lot in addressing those those um, initial challenges or financial complexities that you're looking at putting on around the event. But it's got to be the right sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, and then certainly once you've sort of worked out with the, the costing and logistics of that costing, I'd also, I'd also recommend getting an experience involved in that one that you put on um, rather than just trying to do it from, from, um, from a DIY, DIY sort of perspective. And that's something that we did with our event is uh, fortunately enough in my, in my family, I do have someone who is experienced in event management. Uh, so I've learned a lot from them. Um, and what we have done is when we've put on that, when we've done it right the first time, we've got templates that we can just turn around, modify and adjust uh, and learn from each event that we put on exactly how we're going to deliver the next one. How can we do it at, uh, and how can we do it at a reduced cost um, so that we are more profitable? Um, if and if and if, for example, we don't have the same support, how's it going to look and run and, and operate? So it's always trying to run it on a shoestring budget, so you get the most return, so you can put out the, the most, um, so you can put out a great experience every time. Beautiful, beautiful, mate. That's awesome. So budgeting, from budgeting, everything flows off on that because obviously, as you're saying, um, you can decide what you can include, what you can't include. Um, you know what's uh, possible. And in regards to, I guess, you, you started off with a pretty large, sizable uh, number, 170. So what's your recommendation for someone that might potentially not have as much of an audience or existing network as yourself? Uh, is, is there a better number? Like, is it best to go for 100, 170 out the gate? Or is it, you know, smaller and more intimate? What, what's your thoughts on that? I guess that ultimately depends on what your event is. Um, if it's like a fitness retreat, I imagine you'd, you'd operate off a smaller number, but you'd have a higher cost uh, per head uh, in relation to what you're putting forward. If you're putting on something like an event in your gym, for example, then obviously a lot of those costs are negated in terms of venue and all that sort of stuff. It'd be obviously getting extra hands on, on deck um, to help you out with the logistics of how things operate because you can't do it with one or two people. Uh, if we take an example, the, um, the, the bloke's lunch, uh, big thing that we did is we looked at collaboration and partnerships to get that going. Yep. And that's something you can actually look at. And, and it's often, if you look at the, um, the industry, the fitness industry, it happens all the time where you have um, brands that want to be involved and talk to your audience. Um, you would have uh, possibly even... Um, if you're looking at running a, a fitness event at your, at your centre, for example, there's certainly scope for you to be able to reach out to your clients and reach out to friends of your clients to be able to bring them to your centre um, to get engaged that way. So it really depends ultimately what the event is. But if we're using, my, uh, using the bikes lunch as an example, the big thing we did, like I didn't have 170 people to reach out to, but how we achieved it is through partnerships and collaborations. I mean, fighting and, and collaborating with the right people. Um, and a big thing that also helped us as, as well, and it's something that I now maintain, is we've got some pretty strong media partners uh, involved in what we do. So um, it sa saves me um, cost and time in getting... Um, uh, notice out there in the local media through print, radio, TV, working with those um, yeah. partners, um, given the fact that they've touched field and experience and had that immersive experience in the blokes lunch and it's something they want to be involved in every time, which is really part of the end game is you do actually need to make sure if you're going to put on an event that everyone has a good time. Otherwise, there won't be a second one. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but um, get, get back to your question a moment ago, the big thing is I would look at collaborations and partnerships yes. in, in this industry. If you're putting on an event, even if it's a talk, I'm sure there's other people that want to talk to your audience or they would advertise or advertise your event to their audience to come along to your event so they're reaching and, and, and um, reaching a greater audience and a greater niche. Great, great, mate. That's awesome. So um, in terms of the, the partnerships, the sponsorships, um, whatever, whatever the you know, structure there is or whatever you term it, what is, for someone that's never done this before and has been listening to this yeah. and, and obviously loud and clear about, you know, that's a massive part to it, what is the first step to approaching potential partners? Well, it's, it's something you've touched on earlier um, when, when we've been working together is it gets back to your avatar, doesn't it? Yeah. It's um, who are you trying to talk to and who are they trying to talk to? Uh, it, uh, when we've looked at us in, in the bloke's lunch, one of the things we definitely looked at is our audience. Yeah. Um, so even put out surveys about what sort of brands would you engage with as well. In potential partners uh, with our with our um, event, so and we got back feedback like, yep, yeah, Holden, uh, Harley Davidson, you know, Links Deodorant, you know, Men's Health, Australian Men's Health Magazine, all that sort of stuff. So you look at that content and you look at the sort of people you're talking to, Manshake, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So there's plenty of brands that we can certainly go and talk to and say, well, you know what, um, this is the audience we've got, uh, and um, and from that um, information and, and feedback that we've got there, uh, we know exactly what brands are likely to engage with us because that's the audience they want to communicate with and talk to. Obviously, it's a health conscious brand, um, but obviously with my event being a bloke's lunch, it can be a bit loose about what sort of partnerships we look at. But certainly if I was putting on a fitness event, which we are looking at doing something like that going into next year. Yep. And one of the things that is a bit of a spin-off from doing the bloke's lunch is I have created a health event management company that looks at that. Um, is um, certainly with fitness events, the big thing I'll look at is, okay, what sort of brands want to talk to my audience? So, uh, for example, when I was looking at affiliate-based marketing-based uh, content, Adidas, for example, if I was putting on a kids' event, mm. Adidas want to talk to pre-adolescent teens through to young adults. So Adidas would be a brand that I'd want to talk to, especially for the women's sports um, event or looking at um, young men. Uh, if I wanted to talk to um, older blokes or put on an older, if I wanted to put on a men's health event and, and engage that way, then there's probably going to be brands more likely like Nike or Under Armour that'll want to get involved because of who they want to talk to and engage yeah. with. It's, I suppose in the end, it's just being really intelligent about, it's really knowing your avatar, really knowing your brand. And that's a big thing is knowing your brand and who, who you're talked to and who you want to, who your audience is. And then uh, looking for like-minded brands that are, that are likely to partner with you. Beautiful, beautiful, man. Um, absolutely awesome. You kind of nailed all the points. And to bring back something you talked about earlier is that it is a two-way street. It's a partnership. So if you're going out there and saying, hey, I'm doing an event, do you want to give me a million bucks and, um, and that's about the end of my pitch? Well, that's a one-way street. You, you, you've got to go in uh, assuming you, what are they going to get out of it for what they give you. And as Josh talked about, is is if you think about your avatar and you think about the people that are going to be there, you know, do that. Does that brand want to communicate to those people? What value is it going to bring them? And by creating it always as a win-win, it's how you're going to build those long-term relationships. I guess that you were talking about earlier. Would that be correct? Yeah. So what's really useful, and this is something that I've actually just recently come across reading some content around sponsorship and partnership based agreements the big thing you want to have a look at is what brands want to know is who's your audience and and how many of them are you talking to um and the other side of it is um especially when you're looking at those sort of um, partnership arrangements they also want to know what sort of value or return investment they're going to get from engaging with you so if you're going in with a with a mentality of it's just transactional you're going to give me money that i put on the event and and, and that's and that's about it. Well, you, that's advertising. That's not a partnership. 
Um, if you're looking at sponsorship or partnerships, as we've spoken about, it's about you, you want you want people engaged with you long term to a point where they're almost recommending you or, or speaking to you as a regular ambassador of their brand. That's that's probably a, another consideration there. And, and there's certainly brands that we have. Um, strong partnerships with who regularly engage with me to talk about a number of things like health insurance companies and et cetera, because we've become, become a strong ambassador of their brand. Mm-hmm. But um, getting back to that point earlier, it's definitely about value. So you want to be looking at what sort of value do they get involved? Uh, do they receive from getting involved? So what's the audience? Uh, what's your sort of, who, how many people you're talking to? And then also uh, how are they going to be best featured and then also any content you're putting out, you need to be mindful of that sort of content you're putting out that it's not going to harm their brand or your brand or or um, or um, sort of cast, a, cast I'll probably cast sort of a disparity or shadow over what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, mate, that's awesome. So I guess it's it's going in with the right mindset, thinking about, yourself thinking about your partner's alignment um, overall, you know, what you're delivering, what they're going to get out of it. Um, but then also really sit into that serving the needs, the wants of the actual person attending the event and, and making sure they have a great experience so they want to come back time and time again. So, mate, awesome, awesome aspects on that. If anyone's listening to this, guys, it's it pretty clearly planned out, you know, a pathway of doing that budget all the way through to alignment of, of, of partnerships. Um, in terms of, I guess, to finish up, Josh, is there any, to sum up, you know, kind of all of that, there's so many gold nuggets within there, to sum up uh, all of that, is there any kind of like one line as if someone's listening going, Josh, you know, I'm gonna do this, an event, a retreat, whatever it might be, it might be one day, it might be a weekend, whatever it might be, what would you suggest, uh, if you could just sum it up all in kind of, one or two lines. Oh, you know me, I'm not a one or two line kind of guy. <laughs> um, so look, in terms of, if you're gonna put on an event, you gotta really plan it first. You need to understand exactly who you're talking about, uh, who, who you want to engage with and how it's relevant to your niche. And then after that, potentially look at collaborations and partnerships. And then to sum up, um, with those collaborations and partnerships, it's all about relationship building and rapport. So one of the biggest nuggets or learnings that I've had in relation to working with brands is, um, you know, it's the old adage of people do business with mates, um, you know, and um, the way that comes about is you're actually building that relationship and rapport before you even put a sponsorship document in front of someone. Yeah. Um, if you think that um, putting an event, I'm just going to slap out a whole bunch of emails to companies and they're with my with my prospectus and they and they're going to take it up. They're not. Uh, you do need to actually put in a bit of groundwork on it. Um, they, they've got to build up. It's that whole, the whole sort of friction ladder thing that was spoken about before. It's yeah. You've actually got to have some authority to what you're doing. You actually need to have some sort of, um, you actually need to build rapport and build that relationship before you even um, go into to a prospectus document. So to sum, to sum up, you really need to plan it out is the big thing. You need to plan out who you're talking to, what the event looks like, who would be your best collaborations and partnerships, and then um, you want to obviously build and maintain the relationship, not only with your sponsors, but also with your audience. Beautiful, mate. So, in in essence, don't go in half cocked. Do the planning, do the thinking. Otherwise, you're going to waste time and energy, um, and and kind of not move forward in any direction. So, mate, uh, really appreciate that, Josh. Guys, if you want to find out more about Josh, about what he's doing with, um, you know, Bloke's Lunch, all this, the the spin offs that he's doing with Bloke Lunch, uh, the work that he's doing with, you know, individuals, or potentially the event stuff that he's doing as well. Where would they go, Josh? How would they um, connect to find out more about yourself? Uh, look, more than welcome to um, hit me up through um, <laughs> through the website, either Josh uh, Joshua uh, T Tree dot com or uh, or the Health Entourage dot com dot au. Uh, otherwise, um, obviously, just reach out to me in the uh, in the Tribe Fit group. 
um, I'm up there regularly and um, you know, just slide into the DM. We can have a chat. <laughs> Don't be sending him any dodgy photos in the DMs, but guys, we'll have to uh, confirm on that one. Anyways, mate, appreciate the chat, Josh. Yeah. Loads of good information there, guys. Josh has been through the past. He's done it. He's done it multiple times and obviously it's growing time and time again. So check out what he's doing. Go to those formats if you want to find out any more information. Thanks once again for your time, Josh. And no doubt, buddy, we'll be speaking soon. Bye for now. Great. See ya.